Between the crazy housing market and the pandemic, a lot of homeowners are looking for ways to maximize their living space. Tamara joins us now to show us how she did just that by enclosing her front porch and making it part of the living space. Such a smart idea. So I want to get in there. We're excited to see the interior, but she's going to make us wait. First, she's showing us how she blended the new reno with the existing exterior. And T, it is looking fantastic from what I can see right now. Tell me what the considerations were when you thought about this makeover. Okay, well, I always knew that I wanted to enclose the porch and turn it into usable storage for inside. But it was interesting because when I started working on the renovation, I realized how much it impacts the exterior of the home and how many additional considerations there were for how we wanted our house to look from outside. Yeah, it, you have to think about this because also you're part of a semi. So you have to make sure that this is going to fit also with the house that you're attached to. So let's start by talking about the cladding. Okay, so my primary consideration uh, when I think about the exterior look really was having some unity uh, and cohesiveness between the top and the bottom of my house. And uh, we knew it would look updated, but I also wanted to ensure that the mudroom kind of felt like it had al always been there in a way. So. We kept our existing siding up top to save money and try and and I wanted to try and work with that. And when you're using siding, you really need the top and bottom to match. So that was kind of out of the question. I do love the look of modern wood slats, but I know wood is also higher maintenance. And when my contractor said to me, you know, because of the high cost of lumber right now, we can probably do this with brick and masonry. It's not going to be that much more expensive. I went for it. Okay, so I love that you went with brick. Surprised that you went with brick though, because I figured that would be tough to match. It can be. Uh, they told me I would probably get a pretty good match, but I also knew that we could take it in stages. I could do this whole installation, see what I thought, and if I wanted to later, I could paint it out because I do love the look of painted brick. So really just a reminder to ask your contractor or mason for pricing. Compare the cost of labor and materials for masonry and car versus carpentry. I have to say, I've seen a lot of um, exterior porch makeovers on my own street, but I've never seen a window like yours. It's beautiful that you went with the big window. <laughs> You know what, when we were working on the architectural plans, I just knew I want a big window, A, to let in as much light as possible to the living room and, you know, for airflow, but that really a big window would feel more luxurious. So ultimately, this is as big as we could go while allowing for a closet inside. You don't want to look into the side of the closet mm -hmm. and leaving enough space for a light and house numbers here. Um, you know, I wanted something uninterrupted, so we have a fixed pane window here, as well as a casement that opens up at the side to let air flow through the house. Now, you know, we had a lot of specific sizes and dimensions that we had in mind and details we wanted. So these are from Clara Windows and Doors, and they do custom. So we had the opportunity as well to have the outside black and the inside white, which really works for our design plan. And then the other consideration when you're doing windows is what's happening on the second story of your house. Mm -hmm. So for us, our bedroom window up there was pretty old and it was, you know, the perfect time to replace it. And again, it's the same style. So now the sec first and second story of the house kind of match. Oh, that's great. Uh, you know, do you ever feel, you probably don't have this issue, but now that people can see inside, do you feel like you have to be neat and tidy? <laughs> well, you know, I'm just trying to remember not to walk around naked, really. <laughs> <laughs> Give your neighbors a show. Okay, let's talk about the color palette uh, that you have chosen. Okay, so when you're working on the exterior of your home, a lot of us automatically go to Pinterest, but I found it way more helpful to drive around the neighborhood, look for homes that are a similar size and style of yours, and then take some information from that and inspiration from that. So the houses I saw that looked great had a limited color palette, and when there's too much going on, it can be a bit of a dog's breakfast, so, so to speak. So what we've done here, we went with the khaki color of the existing siding the red brick and then black as our accent and to me like I say with a small house in particular 
keep it to you know three tones so that there's not too much going on and then run with that. The downside was that our old white eaves trough, soffit and fascia were really dragging down the visual aesthetic. <laughs> so of course I had to upgrade those and I actually decided not to take down a wall inside so I could reallocate that budget to new eaves troughs. And I do want to tell people that I did investigate having it painted out and to do that properly and well cost the same as brand new. Oh. So there you have it. Okay, see I'm thinking this is a Sharon Greck situation. She would probably say paint the whole thing out, but if you figured out it's the same to get all of it new, why not just get it new? Let's yeah. talk accessories. It what did. have you got uh, making the place okay. just look so gorgeous? So, you know, sometimes it's about those finishing touches. These house numbers, I think, are super cute. They were $12 each, and, you know, it's a little bit of sparkle and shine. You get nice contrast against the cladding for visibility. I've got a sexy new mailbox and a modern <laughs> light fixture. So, for me, the community on my street, the kids and the families, that's everything. Mm -hmm. I did not want to sacrifice porch hangs and socializing just because we were installing a mudroom. So this was really important to me. I designed the wraparound step for maximum stoop sitting. Uh, and of course, we're not at the landscaping stage yet, but ultimately down the road, we will be, we'll, we'll do something fancy and fabulous and make room for lots of sitting. I do want to add, because I talked to Sharon, we hung out and chatted about this, and this is pressure treated lumber, my beautiful steps you know, budget conscious decision over cedar, and I have to wait a year before I can stain it. It has to go through at least a season, so that's something else to think of. I'll probably stain it a nice gray to match this mortar, but right now, I'm so happy this reno's done, and we get to hang out and have, you know, stoop drinks tonight, I think, on the street. Absolutely, and I know the vibe. See, tomorrow you're in a, a neighborhood adjacent to mine, and the porch is crucial. A lot of wine drinking happens. A lot of like passing by and stopping and having like a 45 minute conversation happens. So you need that outdoor space. Totally. And actually, it's funny you mentioned Sharon because both you and Sharon have probably spent the most amount of time on my front porch talking about everything from decor <laughs> to everything else. So listen, I love the uh, I love the Renault, and I can't wait to see inside.